Hey everybody, I'm Tommy Barnes and welcome to the Mid-Ohio Rock Show brought to you by Two Cousins Pizza. I really love their pizza here in downtown Mansfield on Main Street. Lovely sign here that we're going to do one of those things for you. You know, this is our second opportunity to get a chance to sit actually in downtown Mansfield with Jay Marina. So, Jay, thanks for taking the time to join me tonight. Of course, yes. You know, I think the last time you and I got a chance to hang out was actually across the street right across over the here street, at City yeah. News, wasn't yes, it? It was. You know, and speaking of that, it seems to me like you're going to be doing a CD release party coming up here soon, yes. right? Yes. On September the 16th, I will okay. be doing my CD release party for my EP called Work in Progress. And I'm doing it over at City News with Susie and all of them. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I told you this when we sat down here, work in progress, yes. and it doesn't matter whether you're young, whether you're old, I think to a certain degree we're all just yeah. that, aren't we? We all just continue to grow, I feel like, and especially my music. Um, over the past year alone, I think that I've grown more than ever, so I like to name it that because I want to continue my growth and continue my journey. You and I have had an opportunity. I've seen you I, recently, this summer you got a chance to play the Blueberry Festival. Yes. You went from that <laughs> to something else to something yes. else. You found yourself pretty darn busy here in yes, 2017, haven't you? Especially summer 2017. Um, it feels kind of go, 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 but it's it's the best feeling ever, knowing that I get to do what I love um, pretty much every day between practice and shows and working with other people, collaborating. It's great. One of the cool things that we're doing actually for tonight, we're filming this the latter part of August, is the Final Friday concert. and. One of the cool things I chatted with you about a year or so mm -hmm. ago is that I wanted to see you on this Final Friday stage, yes. the Rich and Source uh, Pavilion stage. Yeah. And so when we met this past December, threw your name in the hat, and it right. was that quickly, we're like, we've got to yeah, get her Yeah, the turnaround was great. <laughs> yeah, I get to, we talked about it last year, and now I'm in it this year, so it was great. I'm so excited. I'm I can so imagine excited. so. And one of the cool things you're going to get to do is get a chance not only to open the evening, right. but to hang out and play with your buds from the Red Ball Jets. Yes. Um, I play for an hour at the beginning, my acoustic set, my normal thing. And then later on, while the Red Ball Jets are playing, I'm going up for three songs with them. So it's a whole different, whole different league, but I definitely love it a lot. chance to actually hang out with those guys a little bit. I know you've yeah. gone up to the lake to uh, that area and done some different shows. Yes. Talk about the learning curve that those guys have really enabled you with uh, this last year. They, um, especially, just all of them, especially have inspired me to do things that are out of my comfort zone, um, especially getting up on stage. Um, it started out with them just pushing me to learn new stuff by myself and now that I get to be with people who I consider great, great friends on stage and I get to work with them and create with them, it's an amazing feeling and I, I wouldn't have gotten it without them. Would you say that one of the things they tell you is if you're going to do a cover song to try to make it your own and yes. I know just going to some of your shows that you do that anyway. That is definitely the focus of a lot of our musical conversations is how can we make this uh, still true to the song itself right. but more true to myself um, and my style and how I play. And you were here before Could look you in the eyes You're just like an angel Your skin makes me cry Oh, you flow like a feather In a beautiful world I wish I was special You're so 
so very special But I'm a Hearing you play a song that you might have done a year ago, right. and maybe how you've reinterpreted that song along the way. I think as I gain more experiences, um, even in music and just in life in general, um, we all have different feelings about different things as we go through life, and I think that's why I change my songs so much, and I get different songs that speak to me at the time, and I get rid of things that don't pertain to me anymore, and I just like to keep it fresh. I think that's probably true with any song. I, mm -hmm. I think that's what musicians are hoping for, that in some cases you either get what they're writing about, singing right. about, or you try to interpret it in your own right. way, however it fits your lifestyle. Definitely. I think that, especially um, on my CD, I tried to make it so anyone who listened could in some way um, relate to me and my feelings and my words. Um, and I know that for this CD, a lot of my focus was on the lyrics because I wanted it to speak to someone and their feelings. Do you feel like you could take your lyrics and, and kind of apply it in a different way? I mean, in other words, if you're doing a soft rock sound garden yes. song, let's say, but then maybe turn those same lyrics into kind of a blues riff or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think it's um, it's one of my favorite things to do to take a either a slow song and make it fast or a fast song and make it slow, just change the feel completely. Um, depending on how I'm feeling about the lyrics at the time, a lot of it revolves around the words in the song. Well, take me back even a couple of years ago when you first really started playing out and mm -hmm. about and the songs that you were picking at the time, do you find you're still, maybe you've mentioned that already, I guess, to a certain degree, that some of them you've taken out, you put right. back in, but you still are falling back on some of those original songs you're I'm doing? I'm definitely falling back on some of my first ones that I learned. Um, all my Chris Cornell things were right. some of my first things that I've learned, and I, I can't put them down. Um, he's my biggest musical influence, so I feel like putting it down would lose a part of my, myself. When you look at a guy like Chris Cornell, when you think about he was, I don't want to say a generation ahead of you, right. how did you actually end up listening to that to begin with? Did that start with your, your mom and dad? Um, it actually started when I was, I was pretty little and I was just really bored with what was on the radio and I was on Spotify, I believe, and I was just looking through the browse right. section and looking through new music I could find. And I came across the um, 90s grunge Seattle era. And I felt that it was just the most emotional and raw music that I've heard, that I had heard before. And I, I still feel like it's one of the most raw eras of music there ever was. I would agree, you know, I, uh, I've got uh, the Sirius XM in one of my right. vehicles and anytime I can hit lithium yes. and kind of go back to that 90s sound, and it just, it, you know, for me, it's just like, wow. And it's like right. a magic carpet ride, I guess. Right, and music has changed so much since then. I like to keep my hold on the 90s, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't right. think anybody would argue with that at all. As you look forward to finishing up 2017, I would imagine your plans become grander and grander yes. as you move forward, yes. right? they do. Um, we are already booking into 2019 for me, actually. Are you really? Yes, so um, it's all very, very exciting. It's all moving very quickly, um, but it makes me stay on top of things a little bit more. Being so young that sometimes it's hard, being the responsible responsible one. but. Um, Keeping, uh, keeping entertained with this and keeping the new things coming, I think it's just going to help me keep going. And this, see, this is, folks, this is where when you latch on to somebody like the guys with the Red Ball Jets that have got tons of experience, that they can not only talk to you musically, but also talk to you about the business side and how the approach is when dealing with venues and, mm -hmm. and all the other aspects of, I guess, right. growing up and becoming an adult. Yeah, um, I think that lately, mostly, has been those adult talks. Um, where Jeremy either pulls me aside, either Jeremy or Dave handle that end of things mostly with me and they say, hey, you know, you need to bump your prices or lower your prices or for this, for this place you need to do a little bit more or something like that because they know, you know, they have the ropes and they're, they're teaching me as we go.
here I am waiting here again. Same old thing. You say she's just a friend. I know your games, and I've lost this war before. I can't see just what I'm fighting for. Cause you'll never